Hello everyone, my name is Veto or Veronica Gomez. Um, I am 24 years old. I was brought here three days before my first birthday with my mother. My dad was already here. Um, growing up, I really did not understand what being an immigrant um, meant, you know, just like Jose. You grow up, the only thing you know they tell you is like you can't visit, you can't visit your family, your grandparents out there. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, they come visit here, it's fine. And uh, um, at 16, I actually found out what that actually meant. When I went to go to the DMV to get my driver's license, um, you know, I go in there, I had already taken the, the written test, and I go in there with my huge uh, Mexican birth certificate, all blue, completely different from the ones that I see here in the U.S. And she tells me, you know, you're an illegal and you're not allowed to get a driver's license. And I just remember completely being devastated that I was like, what do you mean? At 16, everybody wants to get their license. That's the cool thing to do. You just get your little plastic card with your name on it, and you don't really like your picture, but you move on, right? And so, um, you know, I understood, you know, I kind of explained to me, you know, we brought you here at four, you know, this is the issues that you're going to face. And growing up, um, you know, they kept telling me that eighth grade was the only thing that I was going to be able to graduate because of my legal status. And I was like, that's not going to happen because I'm in the honor roll, you know, in seventh grade I was talking about the ABD and, you know, I didn't do honor roll in the other grade, but, you know, after, you know, doing these medication, as they called it, um, I kept going on the honor roll through the high school and um, college, and so, I thought. Um, <laughs> so, at 18, my parents took me to um, Oregon State because uh, that's one of the states that was allowing immigrants to get a driver's license. So I went there, it took about three trips. Um, they took me in a small room, probably a third, not even less, smaller than this room, and um, they put a video, they put the TV on, they gave me a booklet in English, and they're like, good luck, learn the DMV book. And um, that license cost them $600, a little classic thing, something they can get in your own state for 25 to 45 bucks. Um, last year, that license was going to expire in November, and um, a family friend was going to go to Washington State, and you know, I was like, that's another state that's allowing um, immigrants to get a driver's license. So I said, can I ride with you? And I was like, I don't have an address, I really don't know how to do it, but I'm going to come out of there with a license. And I did. It cost me another $600. So if you add it up, that's a good, a large amount of money spending on the little plastic cars. That, so when you get pulled over, you know, you have something to show, not just, hey, you know, I'm undocumented, you know. And just with that, like, I become such a good, I'm not a liar anymore, I promise, but you become such a good liar of what, um, hiding it, you know, when a, a, a police pulled me over for doing a weird turn, but I barely got my license, so I didn't know what I was doing anyway, and it's like, oh, are you here visiting? And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm visiting here, I'm from Oregon, I go to Portland State, and I just make up stories on the spot, you know, <laughs> or going to the club, just something easy as that, that they would take your service license. I would get a pack of with my friends, so that they wouldn't hear that my license wasn't a California license. And so the security there, I was like, you're not, you know, an ICE agent, you're not a police officer, why are you giving me all this hassle? You know, 20 minutes later, I finally gave them to the club, so I'm like, there's no point in that. Um, growing up, I did, after, after 18, um, I started doing odd jobs, just, you know, so I can have some money in my pocket, so I, would, I hate asking my friends for money, because that's, they already work hard for it and break their back every day just to give my sister and I a good home, you know, and food on the table. So, you know, I started doing odd jobs such as construction, house sitting, baby sitting, dog sitting, anything sitting, I was doing it, you know. Um, at one point, I was a real estate assistant and um, a loan officer assistant, you know, they said, well, why don't you move up? You know, you've been doing good, you know, you've been progressing. And I was like, okay, you know, let's see what it takes. And when I saw the requirements that you needed to have, those nine numbers, you know, to be, um, to get your certificate of being a real estate, I was like, you know, I'm sorry, I can't start resigning just so they wouldn't ask any more questions. So it's just that struggle that, you know, those nine little numbers kind of put a limit on what you want to do. But the job that I did, my parents always taught me to be a hard worker. And whatever job it was, do it with pride. Because at the end of the day, that's still money in your pocket, you know, whatever you do. And so last year, I was, uh, Fortune enough with the help of my parents in doing odd jobs. I graduated from um, Cal State East Bay with a um, bachelor's in criminal science and from Lowe's McDonald's, which I thought I was going to be stuck at a junior college. Not that there's nothing bad with being at a junior college, 
I was like, if I'm going to be stuck there for the rest of my life, um, I'll just get all the degrees that they have in there. So, you know, I did, I don't know how many courses, 22 units every semester. I was like, I'm just going to keep myself busy and just educate myself so that when they ask me something, you know, I don't be like, oh, I don't know, you know. So, um, I got an AA there in liberal arts, and um, I remember at my graduation from Cal State, they all staying there. And I didn't really know nobody because I was only there for three, no, four quarters. They go by quarters there, and I was taking 22 units, and I was like, I'm just driving there and driving back home because two hours is just way too far for me to be sitting in traffic. And so I was just sitting there and hearing everybody, you know, tell their, their you know, oh, I got a job after graduation, you know. I'm going to, you know, work with my dad at this business office. And so I was like, yeah, you know, after this graduation, I'm going to have a graduation party. But on Monday, I'm going to start changing diapers. That was my job thing for sitting now. But, sorry. And I was like, I can't accept that. What's the point? I'm spending those long hours. My parents were breaking her back for me just to change diapers. But like my parents said, you know, whatever job it was, you know, I helped pay your car, I helped pay insurance, your phone, you know, anything that you like, you can pay for it, you help us with groceries. And that's all you can do. And I'm like, that's fine. But, you know, walking in class to my classroom, you know, I was criminal justice, so the immigration issue would come up a lot, especially how law enforcement was going to be involved with that. And I just wouldn't say nothing because I didn't want to be you know, out and I'm undocumented because it would be the whole class versus me. And I was like, you know, that I look back on it, I wish I had the courage that I have now to stand up against them. I wish I would have known that I had the voice that I have now. And I would walk down the hallway with my head down and be like, you know. And now, if you would ask me who you are, because before I didn't know who I was, and if you ask me now, I could say my name is Veronica Gomez Rodriguez. I'm a daughter, a sister, a cousin, a friend a student, I'm undocumented, unafraid, and unstoppable.